Before we actually get into the demo of calculating data summaries using R, I'd like to just show you a little bit about R, uh, the way you can set your default directory. Now, one of the things I had mentioned in the first lab with R is an option to set your default directory within the desktop shortcut. Let's take a look at that. So on the desktop, you've got your R icon, right click on it and then say properties. Okay, now when the properties window opens up, you see that there's a field here called start in. Okay, and it shows a particular folder. In this case, it's showing me my documents folder. Now, I actually did not set this at all. I just let it be the default or whatever it was because I happen to keep my data files in different folders. But if you think you'll keep all your data files in one particular folder, and every time you get into R, you want to use that folder, then this would be a good idea. Okay, so the way to set uh, that directory would be to simply type in the folder where you're going to keep all your data files. Okay, now an easy way to do that is for you to open that folder where you're going to keep all your data files. So let's say I'm going to keep my data files in this folder called uh, BI, doesn't matter, I'm just showing you something, data sets, right? So this is the folder where I'm going to keep all my data files, let's say, for the course. Then you get the listing in Windows Explorer and then just click. So here on the, on the address bar, you see the directory structure. Just click to the right of that and Windows automatically highlights the whole path to that folder. All you need to do now is to copy that, control C, and then paste it into this start in folder, right? So I'm just going to paste it, control V, and that's it, okay? So this is going to be the, if I say okay now, this will become the default starting directory for R. So within R, whenever I refer to a file, It'll look for a file in this particular folder. I don't have to give the complete folder path, okay? So you can say, okay, if you've done this, I'm just going to cancel out of this. So that's just something I wanted to show you. That's one way by which you could create uh, your particular uh, default directory. Okay, now I'm going to go, go ahead, open R. Okay, and here, the first thing we want to do in R is to read R. Boston housing data file. Okay, uh, notice that I didn't change my shortcut, so I need to set my directory. So I'm going to say file, change directory, and here I'm just going to search for my particular directory. So it's under my, I'm going to go to users. Within users, I'm going to my username. And within that, I'm, I'm keeping things in my Google Drive. So I click on Google Drive. In BI, in this particular case, I have, I've kept things by week. Go to Spring 2013. My file is actually under week three. And inside lab. Okay, so that's my default folder where I've kept it. So I'm switching to that particular folder here. Okay, so if you've got your files in a particular place at this point, you could switch to the particular folder right here. Or of course, you could have done it by the way I indicated with the shortcut earlier. No matter, I have now switched to that particular place and now I can just refer to the file. So the first thing I'm going to do is to read the file bostonhousing.xlsx, or sorry, bostonhousing.csv and store it in a particular variable. We wanted to call the variable h data, h data, sorry, uh, yeah. h data equals read.csv, and then type the file name. bostonhousing.csv. Notice that the file name is given in quotes. Of course, you have to give starting quotes, ending quotes. Your commands have to be properly formed, otherwise the system will reject your commands. So I do that, since I didn't get any error message, I can see that the data file has actually been read. To verify that the data file has been read, I could just type H data, and it's showing you all the data that I have. So uh, you, I could scroll up and I'll find that it has shown all this data. Right, so it's got uh, crime, zone, these are the columns. 
and it's showing me the rows one two three four etc as you go down now depending on the width of your window it will show as many columns as it can and for columns for which there's no space it'll start showing it down below that's what you're seeing here right so it showed the first uh, so there are four different three different columns here so it showed 12 columns on top and then it's again starting the remaining three columns down here starting again from row one now one thing you could do is if you want to see everything you could make this window quite broad and then it might have enough room to show all the 15 columns now if i type h data once again i see that it's showing all the 15 columns here because there's enough room right so earlier it had to wrap around because there was not enough room okay so this is where the new output begins so you could do look at all of these things okay so we have read the data and as i showed on the slide to get the summaries all you have to do is to say summary h data and you get the complete summary of the data okay it's as simple as that to get data summaries within r so as we've already seen the data summaries in r gives you a very bare bones kind of summary minimum first quartile median mean third quartile and maximum we'll discuss some of these later but first let's also take a look at how to convert the variable chas into a categorical variable right now it's a numerical variable and r is treating it as a number but if it's a categorical variable we would be doing a lot of interesting things with categorical variables so we want r to know that it's a categorical variable so let's see how to do that okay now converting chas to factor now r refers to categorical variables as factors right so one thing you could do is this you could type in this particular command but i don't recommend that you do this there's no sense in typing it in because i'll shortly show you a good way to do that okay so here what we're trying to say is this variable h data it's called as a data frame it has a field called chas so the way you refer to a particular field is to give the data frame name dollar variable name column name or attribute name okay so what we are trying to say is take this variable h data chas replace it with these things here okay i could have said equal to here uh, i'm saying as dot factor h data chas comma labels c no yes Right. In other words, what we are saying is, we are saying this chas has value 0 and 1, convert a 0 to no, a 1 to yes, and replace all the existing values with these new values. Okay. So you could do it this way within R, uh, but you don't have to, because I'll show you a nice way to do that within R commander right now. Okay. Much more easily you can do it in R commander. Okay. So the first thing for you would be to start R commander. Okay, so let's, okay, so now we're going to talk about how to start R Commander. I'm assuming you've already installed R Commander and that your installation is fine. So once you've installed R Commander, the way to start R Commander is by this command, library R Commander, R-C-M-D-R. Once again, you have to type it in exactly like this. Library has to be in lowercase, R Commander has to be R uppercase CMDR lowercase. So once you type that R library R commander, then immediately, not immediately, it's taking time, a window opens up which shows you the R commander. Okay, as I've already explained to you, R commander is just a user interface for R. Instead of us having to type in commands, you make selections within R commander and R commander constructs the textual command and sends it to R. R executes it, gives the result back to R commander, which it then displays, okay? So it's just a front end sitting on top of R, okay? So now within R commander, what we are trying to do, of course, is to change the variable chas to make it a categorical variable. Right now it looks like a numerical variable. So the first thing to do is to make something into your active data sets data set okay our commander always works on an active data set in other words you might have loaded several data sets into r 
Before you do anything in our commander, you have to tell it, this is the data set that I'm going to work on now. Okay, so whatever you've read into R is already available to our commander. So in order to make something the active data set, all you have to do is to go to this box called data set, which says no active data set, which says that currently R doesn't recognize any active data sets, and therefore there's nothing we can do in R, in, in R commander. Our commander is the one that doesn't have any active data sets. Of course, the data is already in R, right? So there's nothing our commander can do till we set an active data set. How do you make an active, uh, a given data set active? Very easy. Just click in inside this box, and then our commander will open up a window which shows you all the available data sets, okay? Available data sets in the sense of all the data sets that have been read into R already. Now, of course, H data is showing up here because earlier we I had read in H data. Just to show you the previous demo, I had read in H data. So it's already there. It contains all the information in the bostonhousing.xls files. So we're saying, okay, make that the active data set. It is possible that multiple items could be listed here if you have read multiple data sets into R. Right now, this is the only data set, so this is all is showing up. Then we say, okay, it's read the data set, and then it's showing you here, uh, the data set H data has 506 rows and 15 columns. Just information for us to know that it properly read it. Right, so sometimes if it's not able to read the information, you'll see here, and you'll be able to figure out from that what went wrong. Okay, so we have read the data set, so the next thing we want to do is, of course, our goal now is to convert chas into a categorical variable or into a factor. So to do that, we go into data, manage variables in active data sets, and then convert numerical variables to factors. Click on that and it shows us a dialog. Okay, so what it's showing you is all the numerical variables in the data set. It doesn't know which is the one that you really want to convert. We know that chas is the variable we want to convert, so I click on chas. Okay, and then it says, do you want to supply the names for each level? After all, chas has the value 0 and 1. Do you want to keep it simply as 0 and 1, in which case you would say use numbers? Or do you want to give actual names? to those numbers. Let's say we want to give names. In other words, zero, we want to call it no. And one, we want to call it yes. Okay, so that is the selection you're making here. Keep it as a number or give a name. Why not? If you can give it a name, your graphs and your results and everything will make a lot more sense. So we'll give it a name. And then it says, okay, you're actually converting the variable from the existing zero, one to something else. Or even you've got a numerical variable, you're making it into a new variable, which is a factor variable. Do you want to store the results in the variable chas itself, or do you want to add another variable? Meaning you don't want to overwrite the existing variable. In other words, it's saying, do you want to add a 16th column? There are already 15 columns. One of them is chas. Either we can replace the chas variable itself with the chas column itself with the new coded values, the level names, or you could leave that as 0, 1, and then create a new variable, okay? So what we're going to say is, well, leave that as chas itself, and I'm going to replace whatever is in chas. So the new value will now overwrite, the new values will overwrite what already exists. So we're not adding a new column, we're replacing the existing column. So, the, so we can keep it as same as variables, okay? That is, we're keeping it in the same variable. So it's clearly asking us, Variable chas already exists. Do you want to overwrite it? Yes, I do. And it says what levels. For zero, I'm saying zero means no. One means yes. In other words, zero means the tract doesn't adjoin the Charles River. One is yes, it does adjoin the Charles River. Okay, so that's done. And in fact, you can see that the same command that I showed on the slide is the command that has been actually executed. Okay. So this is done. So now we've got a categorical variable here. So that is how you take a, a numerical variable and convert it into a factor or categorical variable. 
we have just seen how to convert a numeric variable into a factor within R. We'll be doing this, I guess, quite often when we read data from Excel and we find that we've got certain factors or categorical variables actually expressed as numbers, then we'll have to do this often. Okay, we have seen the process of how to do this. And this is just showing you the same screenplay which we've already seen. So we can do data summaries within R Commander as well. Earlier we had seen how to do this in R. So let's take a look at how to do data summaries within R Commander. So we've got R Commander. We can do statistics, summaries, and then we can just say uh, active data set. It says, well, the data set has 15 variables. Do you want to proceed? OK and it does the summaries. You see the summary output here. Okay. Now one difference you'll notice is that earlier the CHAS variable was summarized as a numerical variable. Now you can see that it's showing you that it has 471 records have no, 35 records have a yes. So now it's treating it as a categorical variable because we converted it. It knows it's a factor and for factors the only summary it can give you is how many values how many different records correspond to each value of the factor. Okay, so this is how you would do a data summary within our commander, not at all difficult. Okay, so when Chaz was numeric, this is how the summary was earlier. Now when we converted it into a factor, the summary comes out like this. Makes sense, obviously. Okay, let's see how to do data summaries within Rattle. Okay, so we are going to see within Rattle how to perform data summaries and generally get used to how Rattle works. So first of all, of course, we want to start up Rattle. I'm assuming that you've already installed Rattle. And let's see how to start up Rattle. There are two commands. One is library Rattle. This will load the Rattle library, Rattle library into the system, into the R system. You have to type the command exactly as it is. And then in order to start up Rattle, you have to do Rattle open bracket, close bracket. This is a little different from starting R Commander where you type in R library R Commander and R Commander starts. But for Rattle, you have to type in Rattle, uh, you have to type in library Rattle and then also do Rattle open bracket, close bracket. So once you open up Rattle, it comes up to this. Now within Rattle, once again, just like our commander, <coughs> you have to have an active data set on which you want to perform all the analysis. And that is where the data tab comes in. The data tab is where you will tell Rattle, this is the data I'm going to use. Okay. Now, as you can see here, it accepts several options for your data. So one is to read a spreadsheet from a file. You could do that. Suppose you say you want to read a spreadsheet. You can check, uh, you know, select that radio button, say, and then, you know, go navigate to the folder. You can see here the folder structure is given here. So you can click at various places here and then, uh, you know, go to the place where you've got your file, select your file, and then say open. You could do that. I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, so you could open an existing file within Rattle. You could do that. Another thing is, since we have already loaded our Boston housing data into the variable called H data, we already loaded it earlier. So we can say, well, I'm just going to choose an existing R data set. That is, it's already been loaded into R. I'm going to use what is loaded in R. So once you select that, you can then go to data name, select H data. It's showing up because we already loaded it. In fact, if you recall, we loaded it and then within our commander, we changed CHAS into a factor, into a categorical variable. So we've done that. So I made the selection. I'm saying, I'm going to tell Rattle, this is the data I want to use. So I made my selections on the data tab. In Rattle, whenever you make a selection on a tab, you have to click execute, right? So make all your selections on a particular tab and say execute. 
So it's done the job. It's read in. It found all these variables. It found uh, 15 different variables. Okay, if you go down here, you see 15 different variables. And notice that the chas variable, it is recognized as a categoric variable. Okay, that is because we set it to be a categorical variable within our commander and we use the same data set h data and therefore it's recognizing it as a categoric variable okay now by default what rattle is going to do is to try and determine from among all the variables in your data set which is the target variable right after all when you're performing data mining there's some variable which is a target variable that is you're trying to learn to build a model to predict the target variable it makes a guess, and the guess may not always be correct. In this case, it thinks the target variable is going to be cat dot median value. Okay, so on some basis, it made a guess. Let's leave that alone for the time being. It's not important what is treated as a categorical variable here, as the target variable here right now. Okay, so we have read the data, and notice also that the data tab actually had a partition option. Right. If you remember, we spoke about partitioning into, uh, you know, the, uh, the the training partition, the validation partition, test partition. That's what it's doing here. So by default, what it's doing is it's taking all the data you have and partitioning it into 70% for training, 15% for validation, 15% for test. That is by default, it's creating three partitions for us. Okay, but for now, because we are doing exploratory data analysis, let's say we don't want to do any partitioning. We want to do this exploratory data analysis with all the data. So I uncheck partition, and since I made a change in the user interface uh, in the data tab, I have to click execute again. Okay, so now it's executed it again. Everything is good. And it's showing us here, roles noted, 506 observations, 14 input variables, the target is cat.median variable, categoric 2, and uh, classification models enabled. Okay, so it's just, uh, class. it enabled classification mo models because it saw a categorical variable. Okay, so that's what it's found out for now. Okay, so now we want to perform exploratory data analysis. So we go to the next tab. We are done in the data tab. We've selected the data set we want to use We've made sure the variables are all okay. So we go to the explore tab and within the, on each tab, you notice that in uh, rattle, it gives you all the things you can do on that particular tab, the various options. So in the explore tab, the various options are what type of exploration do you want to do? Summary, distribution, correlation, etc. We'll be looking at some of these. Okay. And when you choose each of the options, then the things below that, they change. We look at them as we proceed. Okay, so within summary, there are several things you can do. You can do just a basic summary, a univariate data set summary. This is just the basic summary that we looked at earlier. Or you could do description, uh, etc. Or you could select more than one and it will perform all of them. For now, let's just select summary and say execute. It takes a little while and you get the results back. And you can see essentially the same summary that we had earlier has been shown here. This is exactly the same summary we saw earlier. Notice that Chaz is summarized as a categorical variable. Okay, so this is how you do basic data summarization within Rattle.